in GIT. Let us first talk about esophagus. First of all, surgical anatomy. Can you tell me what is the length of this? So, very good. Length of the esophagus is 25 centimeters. Can anyone tell me here that how many layers are there in esophagus? GIT में कितने लेयर्स होते हैं नॉर्मल? तीसो वजह से पांच हैं। See remember, as a rule, this will help you in solving other questions also. All those parts of the GIT which are outside peritoneum, any part of the GIT which is outside peritoneum, it doesn't have zero sum. So esophagus, since is outside peritoneum, it doesn't have zero sum. So it has three layers. And very important point, a lot of confusion also is there on this. Which layer of the esophagus is the toughest layer? The toughest layer of not only a uh, esophagus but also of whole GIT. This goes not only for esophagus, this goes for whole GIT. The toughest layer of GIT is submucosa, and that is the reason why. Earlier, we were making a suture material out of it also. We were earlier. What suture material we were making it? Making it. It is right from some because of. Sheep and cattle guy. You go to Kansi again. Which we. Submucosa of sheep or cattle gut. Cattle mujhe laga goat hai. Very good. Now, be careful about this fact. If they ask you what is the thickest layer? Then it is a muscular layer. Now, what lining epithelium is there in esophagus? It is squamous epithelium. Very good. Now, can you tell me how many natural constrictions are there in esophagus? Two. There are four. There are four natural constriction is in esophagus. Where are they? The first natural constriction is at of our fifteen centimeter from upper incisor. Important point is upper incisor. 15 centimeters from upper incisor and it is due to preco-pharyngeal sphincter. And very, very important point to notice, this is the narrowest 
entry point of GIB. Precopharyngeal sphincter is the narrowest entry point of GIB, and because it is a narrowest entry point, it is also the most common site of foreign body infection in esophagus also. This is the most common site of foreign body infection in esophagus also. Then the second natural constriction is at 22.5 centimeter from upper incisor. It is because of arch of aorta. The third natural constriction is 27.5 centimeter from upper incisor. It is because of left bronchus. It is because of left bronchus. And the fourth natural constriction is because of the iatus opening. Now, can you tell me the blood supply of the esophagus? Again, important. It receives its blood supply from inferior thyroid artery. It receives its blood supply from inferior thyroid artery. It also receives direct branches from aorta. It receives blood supply from inferior thyroid artery. It also receives from direct branches of aorta and it also receives blood supply from left gastric artery and short gastric artery. So it is receiving blood supply from inferior thyroid artery, direct branches from aorta and left gastric artery and short gastric artery also. Now you all know by now that all the veins in the body runs parallel to the arteries. So there will be corresponding veins. And you also know by now that all the lymph nodes in the body are sitting on a vessel. These are those vessels which are supplying that. So correct me if I'm wrong. Can I say here that there will be a lymph node sitting on the inferior thyroid artery. There will be lymph nodes sitting on the these direct branches from aorta. There will be lymph nodes sitting on the left gastric artery and a short gastric artery also. Agreed? Yes or no? These lymph nodes sitting on the inferior thyroid artery are called para tracheal lymph nodes. These lymph nodes sitting on the direct branches of aorta are called media stenal lymph nodes. 
and these are called left gastric nodes and these are short gastric nodes so you have paratracheal lymph nodes mediastinal lymph nodes left gastric and short gastric nodes draining esophagus okay now in see i'll 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 tell you the clinical part of this anatomy now this was the anatomy which we are aware of also if not we should know we know that we have already discussed this in our discussion in breast already that whenever we do a surgery for a malignancy <coughs> if that malignancy has a lymphatic spread in the surgery for that malignancy we have two components like the way we have two component in a breast surgery what were the two components in breast surgery there were two components in mrm and bct also what were the two components wide excision wide excision with lymph node removal was there likewise in surgery for esophagus there is wide excision and there is a lymph node removal also now this extent of wide excision what was the extent of wide excision in breast 1 cm 1 cm mark 1 cm right here it is 10 cm proximal margin 5 cm distal margin now what is the length of the esophagus 15 cm is covered with in this margin itself so there will be some part included in the growth also so that means in other words we are removing whole of the esophagus only yes or no so this surgery is called <coughs> radical esophagectomy this surgery in esophagus is called radical esophagectomy and there are two ways of doing this radical esophagectomy please try to understand this this is important we can do this radical esophagectomy by opening thorax when we open thorax and close it what will that be called the report so there is a trans thoracic approach when we open thorax and do this surgery it is called trans thoracic approach right and when we don't open thorax and remove esophagus without opening thorax it is called trans Idle approach. So there is a trans thoracic approach. There is a trans idle approach also. Trans thoracic approach is also called Iver. Lewis Tanner approach. Trans thoracic approach is also called Iver Lewis Tanner approach. While trans idle approach is also called Oringer's approach. Trans thoracic approach is called Iver Lewis Tanner approach. Trans Idle approach is called Oringer's approach. Okay, out of these two approaches, important, commonly used approaches, Iver, Lewis, Tanner approach. Commonly used approaches, Iver, Lewis, 
standard approach. Now you can appreciate that after this surgery, esophagus will not be there. So how will the patient eat then? How will the patient eat then? So you, that means after this surgery, we have to replace esophagus also. So what is the replacement of choice? Or which is also called conduit of choice. The replacement of choice or conduit of choices, very commonly asked question it is, an answer to this is stomach. Answer to this is stomach. We can use small intestine also, we can use colon also, but we commonly use stomach. Okay. Now, is my important part kya hai? that stomach has its own position. You know that. Now, you have to take stomach to the position of esophagus. So, when you take the stomach from its original position to the position of the esophagus, you have to mobilize it. Right? To mobilize stomach, the vessels are connecting stomach, so you have to divide them. So when you divide the vessels supplying stomach, the stomach may get necrosed. So we don't want that to happen. So we have to divide vessels also and we have to preserve vessels also. So which vessel to be preserved so that the stomach can be taken as a replacement of esophagus is important for us. So the stomach as a conduit very commonly asked question is based on stomach as a conduit is based on right gastric artery and right gastroepiploic artery. This stomach when is taken to the position of the esophagus it is based on these two important vessels that is right gastric artery and right gastroepiploic artery okay now coming back to the other aspect of the anatomy and then its clinical application now can you tell me that how many sphincters are there in esophagus? Four. Answer is two. When I said two, I said four. When I four, I said four. When I four, I said four. Is it okay? Okay. 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 There are two sphincters in esophagus. Upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter. What forms a upper esophageal sphincter? It's an anatomical sphincter. Formed by preco pharyngeal muscle. What forms a lower esophageal sphincter? It's a physiological sphincter. It is due to tonic spasm of tonic spasm of inner circular muscle of lower esophagus. And the pressure here is 10 to 25 mm of mercury. And its length is 3 to 5 centimeter. Check the exam. Pressure here is 10 to 25 mm of mercury and the 
length is three to five centimeter. Then, in esophagus, there are three waves of peristalsis. Important. In esophagus, there are three waves of peristalsis are seen. First is a primary wave. They, they commonly have asked this question. What is the function of primary wave of peristalsis? What is the function of secondary wave of peristalsis? And what is the function of tertiary wave? Primary wave of peristalsis is the main wave which takes down the food bolus. Primary wave of peristalsis is the main wave which takes down the food bolus. Secondary wave of peristalsis, important point to note, is usually not present. It comes into play to propel difficult or stubborn bolus. So, with this understanding now, if I ask you, which of these two waves have a more pressure? Secondary. Obviously. So, secondary wave of peristalsis has more pressure or more amplitude than a primary wave. Now, you all must have experienced it that normally when we take any food, we don't get to realize that our food is reaching the stomach also. We never come to know even. But sometimes when we take uh, something which is you know, a big chunk of some uh, food, it gets stuck and then there is a spasmodic pain happens and then it goes down. Right? So, Secondary wave, since has a higher amplitude than the normal, can cause pain. You should know this. Then there is a tertiary wave. This tertiary wave is non propulsive, non progressive. Wave of unknown significance. Ye na to khud aage hoti hai, na kisi aur ko aage karti hai. Kyun hoti hai? Ye bhi nahi pata, but hoti hai. It is non-propulsive, non-progressive wave of unknown signal. It is still not known that why does this wave come. But it is there. It's a physiological wave. Okay. So these are the waves of peristalsis. Okay. <coughs> then comes investigations. Can you tell me what all investigations do we have for say for evaluation of esophagus? Variant any more? <laughs> we have contrast isophagogram. Say <laughs> bola, say bola. Contrast isophagogram. In contrast isophagogram, we have two types of contrast. Barium, when barium is used as a contrast, it is called barium swallow. <laughs> we have water soluble contrast also. In water soluble, we have gastrographin. We have iohexol also.
Now let us talk about this contrast esophageal arm pulse in which more commonly done is barium swallow. Let us know important point about this first. Barium swallow is the investigation of choice for esophageal diverticulum. Barium swallow is also investigation of choice for esophageal strictures. Barium swallow is also investigation of choice for webs and rings in esophagus. Barium swallow is the most sensitive investigation for esophageal perforation. And you should also know barium swallow is a first investigation. in functional disorders of esophagus. Can you name any functional disorder of the esophagus? Ecclesia cardia. Very good. Ecclesia cardia. In ecclesia cardia, we will be discussing that in detail though, but I am trying to give you all the information at one place so that you don't have to, you know, rush to your uh, notes. Ecclesia cardia. In Ecclesia cardia, when you do barium swallow, you get a <laughs> bird beak or pencil tip deformity or S shape. Or sigmoid esophagus. This is bird beak. This is S shape. In diffuse esophageal spars, you get core. Screw esophagus like this and important point to note further here is sometime, sometime, rarely but sometime one can get a rat tail appearance also in ecclesia cardia but Please highlight that in your notes. Rat tail appearance on barium solo is actually more suggestive of carcinoma esophagus. See, I can see many of you are coughing like me also coughing. The bad flu going on actually. Most of us are, I don't know whether it is COVID or not. But it is not COVID because I got my RT-PCR also done. I was not well for about for good five, six days. So there's a bad flu, so please be, be careful about it. And it's a very bad flu actually. Because many people are coming up with a complication of uh, this flu also. Some people are developing otitis media. Some people are developing like me. I am having a severe laryngitis. My voice is not the same I uh, uh, earlier had. Probably it will come back, should come back. But then I am feeling that. So it's a very bad flu. So be careful about it. Take few precautions and take a good diet also. 
so diet is very important you guys are you know work uh, studying and most of the time you compromise on your diet at this time your immunity is important you can't afford to uh, fall sick okay now coming back so it's a first investigation in functional disorder of esophagus then these are the important points we need to know thoda sa slow acha okay sorry so these are the important points about the barium solo then comes another investigation which is very important and that is endoscopy it is also called egd what is egd esophago gastro endoscopy this endoscopy can be diagnostic can be therapeutic in diagnostic endoscopy it is the investigation of choice for upper gi bleed it is also investigation of choice for dysphagia to solids it is also investigation of choice for carcinoma esophagus and it is a gold standard investigation for esophageal perforation also so can you tell me what is the investigation of choice for gerd Yes, sir. Twenty-four hours. 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 Twenty-four hours.
checked in exam it is also used to do a stapler di verticulo iso fejostomy ostomy <laughs> which is for zenkers diverticulum and this procedure is called dolmen's procedure this diverticulo iso fejostomy is done for zenkers diverticulum and this procedure is called dolmen's procedure okay so these are some of the important and one can also do stenting of the esophagus through upper ji endoscopy stenting staple karte स्टेपलर में करते क्या है अब पूछा तो बताना पड़ेगा देखो ये ये ईसोफेगस का डायवर्टिकलम होता है ऐसे और सिंस यू हैव आस्ड इट एंड आई वुड हैव सेड दैट नॉट नॉट रिक्वायर्ड आल्सो बट देन दिस क्वेश्चन हैज कम इन योर एग्जाम आल्सो सो आई शुड टेल यू दैट इज व्हाई आई हैव मेंशनड आल्सो स्टेपलर डायवर्टिकलम ईसोफेगस्ट व्हाट वी डू इन दिस एक ऐसा स्टेपलर आता है जिसमें ऐसे दो प्रॉन्स होते हैं द टू प्रॉन्स आर देयर लाइक दिस और इसके एंड पे ऐसे एक गन होती व्हेन यू प्रेस दिस गन द द जॉस कम्स नियर दैट तो आप यू विल पुट दिस स्टेपलर थ्रू द ओरल रूट वन ऑफ द जॉ ऑफ द स्टेपलर कम्स हेयर अनदर जॉ गोज हेयर and it goes up and outside the mouth we press this when we press this this comes closer and they staple the two things together and there is a way to there is a knife also in this stapler when we there is a plunger when we withdraw that plunger the knife comes out from here and it goes back into the prongs so when this knife the plunger is pulled the knife keeps cutting the 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 two structure which they have joined also. So what happened now? Finally, this happens. Means, आपने दोनों को जोड़ दिया. जोड़ के बीच में से जब आपने प्रॉन्ग को कीचा तो वो नाइफ आएगा, वो काटेगा. और उन दोनों को आपस में जोड़ भी दिया और बीच में एक common chamber भी बना दिया. This is how the stapler works, right? So this this is done by stapling technique. So it was a question asked that this endoscopic diverticulo esophagectomy is done by using what choices were it is a open repair it's a stapler repair it's a stapler repair okay so these are the points we should know in endoscopy <clears throat> then comes endoscopic ultrasound ये एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड इज अ वेरी गुड मोडालिटी एंड यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन देन ओनली यू कैन यू नो अप्लाई दिस नॉर्मली यू ऑल नो दैट अल्ट्रासाउंड प्रो वी पुट ऑन द स्किन और ऑन एबडोम एबडोमल स्किन टू सी द स्ट्रक्चर्स इनसाइड दैट प्रॉब्लम हेयर इन एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड वी हैव सच अ फाइन प्रोब्स अवेलेबल विच वी कैन माउंट ऑन द which we can mount on the endoscope so we put the probe on the endoscopes we put endoscope through the oral route into the esophagus and now the ultrasound probe is directly inside the wall of the esophagus and can see not only the the things in the wall 
but also around the use of other cells. The important point about this endoscopic ultrasound is that that आपने ये बाहर से नहीं देख रहे आप अंदर से देख रहे हो और विद इन थ्री सेंटीमीटर किसी भी ऑर्गन में जब आप ये रख दोगे एंडोस्कोप एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड यू कैन सी विद इन थ्री सेंटीमीटर ऑफ दैट ऑर्गन तो अर्लियर रीचिंग टू द मीडिया स्टेनर ईसोफेगस इज इन द मीडिया स्टेनर वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर अस बिकॉज देर वॉज नो मोडलिटी विच कुड हेल्प अस टू रीच सो क्लोज टू दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स so now with endoscopic ultrasound coming up anything which is there in the mediastinum we can easily make out with endoscopic ultrasound we can put endoscopic ultrasound on the stomach posterior wall and we can see whole of the pancreas also easily now so that's a advantage we got with this this very important investigation so what is the importance of endoscopic ultrasound per se for esophagus we need to know endoscopic ultrasound is a best or investigation of choice for depth of penetration of carcinoma esophagus can i say, say in other words t staging for hollow organs t stands for depth of penetration for solid organs t stands for size okay endoscopic ultrasound is also investigation of choice in hollow organs it is depth of penetration in solid organs bataya tha size of the tumor bhul gaye investigation of choice it is also investigation of choice for lymph node status in media stenum right now how many layers are there in esophagus three three important point to note in endoscopic ultrasound endoscopic ultrasound gives show us five layers maine bola tha sir hai na endoscopic ultrasound shows us five layers ab ye panch layer kahan se aa gaye jab teen thi to it can tell us mucosa lamina propria inner circular outer longitudinal and adventitia all these structures separately seen easily not required at your level just need to know five layers what all layers not required just remember on endoscopic ultrasound one can see in esophagus five layers so the the point to understand is that how deep is the growth you can easily make out through endoscopic ultrasound because it can all layers can be seen so easily on this pen ct scan is the investigation of choice pet ct is the investigation of choice for staging carcinoma esophagus if pet ct is not in the choice then it is ct pet scan is a investigation of choice for systemic spread of carcinoma esophagus and also recurrence now can you tell me what is the most common site of distant metastasis from carcinoma esophagus most common site of distant metastasis lungs lungs see remember this will help you in solving many questions most common site of distant metastasis from all gi malignancies most common site of distant metastasis from all gi malignancies is liver except except two except two gi malignancies all gi malignancies goes to liver what are those two cholangiocarcinoma 
एन एनल कार्सिनो वट इज कलेंजो कार्सिनोम कॉल बैटर के डक उसको क्या कहते हैं कॉल बैटर के डक को बाल डक रहते तो कलेंजो कार्सिनोमा सिस्टिक डक था कलेंजो कार्सिनोमा इज अ कार्सिनोमा राइजिंग फ्रॉम द बिलरी ट्री दैट इज बाइल डक बाइल डक और हिपैटिक डक इट्स अ कार्सिनोमा राइजिंग फ्रॉम आइदर हिपैटिक डक और अ बाइल डक देन 24 आर पी एच मॉनिटरिंग is a gold standard investigation for grd you just need to know one thing here that through this 24 hour ph monitoring we calculate a score called d meester score through a 24 hour ph monitoring we calculate a score Called D Meester score, and this twenty-four hour pH monitoring is also called ambulatory ambulatory pH monitoring. So these are the important points about all these investigations. Now let us talk talk about gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastroesophageal. reflux disease now before we talk about the clinical presentation of these patients can you tell me what are the various factors there in the body factors preventing reflux can you tell me what is the most important factor which prevent reflux the most important factor is intra abdominal pressure other factors are length of abdominal esophagus tone of lower esophageal sphincter right Plus of diaphragm. These factors are important for our exams. Right, plus of diaphragm. <coughs> Sling, fibers of cardia. Gastroesophageal angle, which is also called angle of. is not her then mucosal folds also these are the various factors preventing reflux and the least important factor and the most important most important is intra abdominal pressure and the least important is mucosal folds now can you tell me how does a patient of grd presents there are typical symptoms and there are atypical symptoms can you tell me what is the most common typical symptom of gr all right done till chale 
एसिडिटी वट इज एसिडिटी इट इज हार्ट बर्न वट इज हार्ट बर्न वट इज हार्ट बर्न जब एसिड ऊपर आ जाता है तो वही बात होगी पेशेंट आपको कैसे डिस्क्राइब करेगा Which is burning in nature in retrosternal region. Pain which is burning in nature in retrosternal region. No, they go kuch kuch. के कुछ की पॉइंट्स होते हैं इफ दो की पॉइंट्स आर देयर ऑन द बेस ऑफ पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेशन वी कैन बी रेस्ट एश्योर्ड दैट वी आर डीलिंग विद दैट प्रॉब्लम ओनली सो देर आर फ्यू प्रॉब्लम टेल टेल प्रेजेंटेशन सो कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज अ टेल टेल सिम्टम ऑफ जी आर डी टेल टेल मतलब इफ दैट सिम्टम इज देयर It means it is there in that problem only. Retrosternal chest pain, getting aggravated on, getting aggravated on, lying down. bending over or wearing tight garments any other typical symptom if they if this profile is there in any given question you can take it for granted that it is here any other typical symptom you can think of regurgitation any other dysphagia what is dysphagia and classical point about this dysphagia is it is intermittent dysphagia so these typical symptoms are important but a typical symptoms are equally important here any a typical symptom you can tell me any a typical symptom you can tell me very good hoarseness of voice and very important point about this hoarseness is it's a early morning hoarseness any other nocturnal cough very good then symptoms of recurrent otitis media or symptoms of recurrent laryngitis asthma and dental enamel erosion also dental sunte keri se aata hai dimag mein dental enamel erosion so these are the typical and eight typical symptoms of GRD. Now, what will be the investigation of choice? Endoscopy. Endoscopy. What is the gold standard? Twenty-four hour PS monitoring. Now, very very important. The first line of management.
first line of management in any patient of GRD, important, is lifestyle modifications with proton pump inhibitors for six to eight weeks. Lifestyle modifications with proton pump inhibitor. Now, what lifestyle modification you will advise the patient to adapt to and for how long? For how long? Lifelong. Lifelong. So, what is the most important advice here? Quit smoking. And what is the second important advice? Weight reduction. These are the two important advices. Other than this, other than this, you should advise patient to avoid avoid carbonated drinks, alcohol, and spicy meal. And patient should also be advised to take frequent small meals. And very important to note, the last meal checked in exam, patient should take three hours before sleeping. Obviously before sleeping, not after sleeping. <laughs> And patient should also be advised to sleep with, not with someone. <laughs> sleep with head and up position. These are the advices the patient should follow for life with proton pump inhibitor for 6 to 8 weeks. Now, can you tell me what is the most common complication of GRD. In some <laughs> the most common complication is esophagitis. If if not in your choice, then parrots. If not in your choice, stricture. Now then comes the indications of surgery. There are times when we have to offer surgery for a patient of GRD. So what are the indications of surgery? One. One. Not required at your level. There is, there is a grading. That is called Severy Miller grading. Not required. Complications. Once the patient is having a complications of GRD, patient is a candidate of surgery. Second, if the patient has atypical symptoms, so please be careful in your given question. If the profile of the patient provided to you is such that there are atypical symptoms mentioned in that, <laughs> stricture means narrowing. Stricture means narrowing. So, complications and atypical symptoms, if atypical symptoms are provided to you, be careful about in a profile of the patient. Or if in a profile of the patient, complications of GRD mentioned and asked what is the treatment, then the treatment will be surgery. Remember. And in surgery, we have this surgery is called NT reflux surgery. This surgery is called anti 
reflux surgery and this in in this anti reflux surgery we have fundoplication we have gastroplasty and we have pelsi mark 4 repair anti reflux surgeries include fundoplication coolies gastroplasty pelsi mark 4 repair and in this the surgery of choice is fundoplication and in fundoplication it is laparoscopic nissens floppy type of fundoplication laparoscopic nissens floppy type of fundoplication we don't need to go into the detail of this the most common intra operative complication of this procedure very commonly asked question is pneumothorax most common complication in general if asked it is gas bloat syndrome most common intraoperative complication if asked it will be pneumothorax most common complication in general if asked it is gas flow syndrome so these are the points we need to know what is important i am again stressing on this fact they can they give these kind of these kind of questions in your exam these days if in a profile of a patient of a grd complication mentioned or atypical symptoms provided and you are asked what is the treatment for this patient now for all other patients the first line management is most of the time sufficient especially in these patients comes a role of surgery so then your answer should be surgery up front surgery and what is that surgery laparoscopic nissens floppy type of fundoplication now since you have a class lined up at 5:30 so i have to finish off at 5:30 so we'll continue with this next time and talk about the remaining part here. and please keep doing the test a common